Look at this batch of tomatoes. I know, we have 32 pounds of tomatoes. And do you wanna know what we're making with it? You wanna tell them? We are making herbed spaghetti sauce, which is just a fabulous way to use that prolific yield from your garden. Yeah, these tomatoes have been quartered, is all we've done to prep them. And so this, like Marie said, this is 32 pounds of tomatoes, and we are going to put these into our stock pot. Now for these tomatoes, we got the Romas, and so they don't have nearly as large of a core on them. If you had the beef steak, you'd need to pull that out as well. Mm -hmm. So let's dump these into our pot. Marie's gonna make sure they don't fall out do the other side. Yeah. I'm impressed, good job. Yeah. I'll get it. How's it gonna fit in the pot? I know. <laughs> I didn't realize the container was bigger than it's the pot. Huge. Ooh! Woo. So you're going to need a really big stock pot. This is my Low Country Boil pot. I love this thing. Now, if you don't happen to have one this size, you might have to go in two pots for this stage. Or what, maybe four. <laughs> <laughs> right, depending on the size of your pots. <laughs> What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna cook it down until these are nice and soft. And as it gets more liquid, it'll be easier and easier to stir. Yeah, but in the beginning, we'll be uh, up to our elbows in right. tomatoes. <laughs> now that our tomatoes are nice and soft, it's time for us to send them through the food mill. Now, if you didn't have a food mill, you could use a blender or they have the little hand food mills. Mm -hmm. I really like this one because it works a little bit faster. And then one of the keys that I found is actually to strain it. A lot of people don't do this, but if you strain it, you can pull off the juice and then it reduces your cooking time later by huge amounts. Mm -hmm. And this strainer that we're using is Marie's husband from working with uh, honey with his bees. Yeah, this is a honey strainer, and it actually goes on top of a um, on top of a bucket. And I really like it because I can put it on top of any pot, mm -hmm. and it's got a double double thickness. We're going to put a link to this down uh, in the bottom. Just go to our store and it will be in our canning equipment section of our shop. Which is funny because it's for honeybees, but I absolutely yeah. love it. It's yeah. Actually, I think I've used it way more than he has. <laughs> Probably. All right. And I know we don't have our overhead camera on, so I'm gonna kind of pull this up and you can see what we're down to just this beautiful pulp of and juices of the tomatoes so that's our tamper i want to get close so i don't make as big of a mess and if you're using one of these food mills you want to make sure that you don't turn it while it's dry because if you do it's actually really bad for the machine it makes it not last as long and i recommend going kind of kind of slow and steady because if you do it too fast it will spill all over the place. So you just kind of want to press it around with the spatula. Gets out as much of the juices as possible before we dump it into the pan. Right. Now, if for some reason you do feel like you took out too much of the juice, it's really easy to add it back in. Mm -hmm. Half of it, we can do one. Well, we might as well dump it. May as well. Okay, ready? Mm hmm. We dump the juice and we save it for later. We can can this up. We actually, we just did a different spaghetti sauce. It was, was it our garlic? Uh, the garlic herb, uh, the garlic basil. Garlic basil spaghetti sauce. We can put a link here if you want to look at it. But we got 
five quarts of juice out of that one. Mm-hmm. And, and that, that one was wasn't even 20 as many. pounds of, pota- of tomatoes, and we're right. doing 32 pounds of tomatoes yeah. for this one. So we, by the time we're done, this thing should be way up here. Pretty full. So Emmeline's excited to take that home. She's going to can it up. Yep. This is an amazing amount of tomato juice. Isn't that incredible? So almost 12 quarts. This is normally what we would be cooking down out of our sauce, but we are almost at the level that we want a thickness here already. Yeah. So that saves us so much time. So there was five quarts from our first recipe today mm-hmm. and seven quarts or just shy of seven quarts for this one. So I'm gonna take this home and can it at my house. Mm-hmm. We're going to cook our onions. Now this is five onions that we have just diced up. Okay, we're gonna switch this to our bigger frying pan. Give us a little more space to deal in. Yeah. Merry Christmas to Marie. (laughs) That's right. Now with Christmas, we get all sorts of fun stuff. Our husband's is easy to buy for us. He's like, what do you need for your videos? (laughs) Yeah, anything for the kitchen and canning is perfect. Yeah. Okay. In addition to the onions, we're going to add three-fourths a cup of the garlic. We're also going to add three-fourths of a cup of olive oil. And we're going to top that off with six tablespoons of butter. Now we're going to put this on the stove, cook it for five minutes until the onions are just starting to get tender and the butter is all melted, and then we're going to add our spices. So now that it's been the five minutes, we've got our butter nicely melted in there. Look how yeah, good looks, that looks. Delicious. <laughs> I love the smell of cooking butter. <laughs> right, right. So we're going to go ahead and add our spices to it. Okay. You want to start over there? Yeah. So let's go ahead and start with our basil. And for basil, you're going to want to put in one tablespoon. Then we have some parsley, and you want two tablespoons. We're also doing two tablespoons of oregano. One tablespoon of ground black pepper. One and a half tablespoons of sugar. Three tablespoons of salt. Two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. I should have made you say that one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, we're well, well, <laughs> And then we have, um, we need two teaspoons of the crushed red pepper. And we get pizza in our area, and they come in with these little packages, and there's always so many extra. But this is just a great way to use these up. Oh, that wash- Worcester sauce <laughs> smells so great. You don't make me say it. I know, I know. It's hard. <laughs> so those crushed red pepper um packages are just about a tablespoon each so we just did two of those or a teaspoon i was like uh, yeah not a tablespoon (laughs) that would be a lot so now we're going to put this back on the stove for another five minutes and then we'll combine it with our tomatoes the smell of this is really fantastic and I couldn't help but did a quick little taste test and it, it really is great and I know the tomatoes aren't in it yet but you can kind of get an essence for what it's mm-hmm. going to be like yeah no it's really good so we're gonna go ahead and combine our onion mix with our tomatoes thankfully just, we've got big walls here so yeah that helps try not to splatter ourselves right you want the spatula? Yeah, I think so. Can you reach it? And you know, anytime you're canning, it's a really good idea to scrape things down because it's amazing how much can get wasted if you don't. Mm-hmm. The first time I was with my neighbor, and she is a fabulous canner, and we were canning some jam, and she was so worried about scraping every little thing, and I thought, is it really that? important you know and and then when i saw how much more we got out yeah that's amazing yeah mm-hmm. sometimes you can get a whole nother like especially if you're doing the half pint sometimes right. you get two full ones with just what you scraped off oh yeah yeah, yeah. that's pretty incredible 
So then you just go ahead and mix your tomatoes and your onions together. And we are going to heat this up on the stove. Oh, on that side. Mm -hmm. Now for us, we're mostly just getting it back up to that simmering temperature. But you know, if you felt like you needed it to be a little bit thicker, you could cook it down more. I think ours is plenty thick. Now, if you felt like it was too thick, you can always add some of your juice back. Mm -hmm. The herb tomato sauce is done simmering and it is time to fill some jars. We're going to be filling quarts today. Remember everything is going to be hot. We're going to begin by putting a little bit into the bottom and then adding two tablespoons of lemon juice into it before we then fill up, uh, finish filling up the jar. There's that. Now this lemon juice, what it does is increases the acidity of the contents and it makes it so that it um, is, is safer to do in the boiling water bath. It used to be that uh, you didn't have to do that because the tomatoes had more acidity. So if you look at some of the older um, canning books, you might see that they don't say to put the lemon juice in, but you really want to at this point because our tomatoes now are different. We'll get a couple here going for you. Oh, it splatters, be careful, because it's also extremely hot. One inch headspace. Is that what we're going for? Half an inch of headspace. Half an inch of headspace. Headspace is the space from the top of your food to the top of your jar. And the reason I put the lemon juice in in the middle is because I don't want to break my jar by putting it on the bottom. You could put the lemon juice on the very top, but sometimes it's a little bit harder because you have to estimate for that space. And be careful when you're dumping chunks like this that you don't end up going too much. So what I what happened right there is I put too much in, then I took too much out. It's a little bit of a back and forth. That's okay. It's pretty easy to adjust. Yeah. So having a spoon handy is really nice. Now, if you get anything on the outside of your jar or up on the rim, just use a clean cloth to clean it off so that it doesn't interfere with the seal. It's really nice to have a partner to can with. You know, I've canned a bunch with my husband, with my kids. If I don't, I like doing like an audiobook. Mm -hmm. Now, if you guys would like to print out the recipe or download it, you can always go to our website at wisdompreserved.live. Down in the bottom, we have a link in the description that will take you to the exact post for this particular recipe. So you can always just click there. All right. So we were just shy of being able to do seven jars. Every batch is going to be slightly different. But that's okay because this will be dinner. Yes, and taste tester. Because right? <laughs> we have to test it. <laughs> that's right. Okay, well, let's process these in the water bath. We're going to process these quarts in a water bath canner for 40 minutes if you're at sea level. Now, we live at 1,200 feet, so we're going to be processing them for 45 minutes. Now, if you have any questions about how altitude affects your processing time or how to use a boiling water bath, go ahead and take a look at this link. We are ready to pull out the herbed sauce. And you can see all those lovely herbs floating in it. They're gorgeous. I just, tomatoes make me happy. You know, they grow so well. So plentiful, and you can make such a variety of items with them. Yeah, I mean, really. So we did four different kinds of tomato sauce today, and every single one of them 
tastes good. And exactly. Different. And right. For, yeah. It's funny how so many of the ingredients are the same, uh -huh. but yet you can make so, something so much different than the previous one. Right. All right. Last one. So this one ended up making six quarts, almost seven. Yeah. Like just so shy just of shy. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And possibly if we hadn't have put all the lids and rings on already, we had some that we had overfilled. Uh, we we might have got that last okay. one out of it. Mm -hmm. But these look beautiful. I'm really excited to add them to our pantry. Oh, yeah. Me too. Always fabulous yeah. to have so many choices for mm -hmm. meals to put on your table that are nutritious and you know exactly what you put in them. Are we ready to try this herb sauce? <laughs> we are. So I've actually had this before, but am I? This is first time for her. Yeah, just whatever I was licking off the pan. Because <laughs> we all have to admit, I've tested it before we got <laughs> to this point. So we have some meatballs here to eat with it and a little bit of spaghetti. Which is super good with the meatballs. Now, honestly, if you want to get like the true taste of it, you got to do it without a meatball. Right. I'm you know? going to grab a little bit off the front first. Mm. So tomatoes really came out with it. it yeah. yeah. I actually really like how much onion is in this one. Because mm -hmm. it's five whole onions. Mmm. And there's just a depth to it. I think it's because of the butter and the olive oil in it. That Definitely. It, it just feels more like rounded and smooth. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to describe it, but. No, it really does. And mm -hmm. the, if you're eating it with like a meatball or something, it really just kind of enhances the flavor of the other stuff around it. I'm going to try it on the actual spaghetti now. A really fresh, light flavor again. Yeah. Yeah. So it's another like light it. sauce when you have it with just... The, the meatballs actually make it the little heavier in the depth, but if you're right? eating it without the meatballs, it's a really light, springy mm -hmm. type of a sauce. I like it. Really fresh taste. Mm -hmm. If you're enjoying these wonderful canning videos that we are making for you, we would love it if you would like our video, subscribe to our channel, and ding the notification bell so that you're notified the next time that we post videos. And go ahead and follow us on Instagram or Facebook. And don't miss our premieres that come out every Monday at 2 Pacific time. And we have so many weeks that we have extra videos that we want to throw in that we publish those on Wednesdays and Fridays when we have them.